So retorque the action screws to 45 inch pounds using these uh, fix it sticks torque limiters. And uh, 15 inch pounds on those cap screws just to make sure those are in place, but I think this should be good. Saturday, November 19th, I'm at the West End Gun Club. If you were paying attention to my blog, I documented the fact that I got a new shilling barrel for this Savage 10 MP. It's in 6.5 Creedmoor, 24 inch, 1 and 8 twist. So, right now, pretty much trying to bore sight it. If you, I have an article in my blog about bore sighting, you don't need a laser. All you got to do is remove the bolt, fix your bore on a target, look through the look through the barrel to line up the bore with the target and then keep it in a fixed position and you can adjust your scope accordingly until you get the reticle on target and that should get you pretty much on paper and in a couple shots it should be zeroed so right now pretty much just trying to line up my target on a, a line up my Rifle. So my rifle's now lined up on the target. Come right. So uh, this is my first 6.5 cream work. <clears throat> and since I am going to be reloading, I want to at least get a baseline with this gun. So I'm using the Hornady 140 grain ELD match and the prime ammunition 130 grain. This is using, I believe, a normal bullet. <coughs> but the Hornady is pretty much the baseline standard right now, so I'm going to try that first, and I'm going to get some chronograph data with it. So I at least know how well this shoots, or what my velocities will be with the, out of a 24-inch barrel. Because <coughs> most manufacturers, I think, do their baseline chronograph data on 24-inch barrels. Um, I usually shoot 26, but I kind of wanted to go shorter on this. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're high at 100 by a good five minutes at least. So we're going to come down. I'm going to come down six just to be sure. We're down good, but we're still le right of target, so we're going to come left, about two minutes. Okay, we're on the two minute paster, the shoot and see paster, so we'll shoot a group on that. 
still kind of low, but we'll work with it. We just want to shoot a group right now and get more chronograph data. But it seems like the uh, primers on the Hornady brass look good. Doesn't look like there's any pressure issues. Usually about this time I'd actually clean the barrel first before I switch ammo, but I'm not feeling a little lazy to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just discount the first couple rounds as far as the data, as far as the group is concerned. This is Prime Ammo. Uh, this company is out in Vegas. I ordered it on um, Monday, I think, and they actually shipped it out on Tuesday. They had it delivered on Tuesday, so it was one day delivery uh, from the Vegas to California, which is surprising. Twenty-nine oh three feet per second with the hundred thirty grain, which is pretty fast. The primer looks good. So the first round is twenty-nine oh three feet per second, twenty-four inch barrel, hundred thirty grain. Primer. And the shot was about center, maybe a little left and a little low. Shot dropped about a half inch. Now it's 28-21, which is a significant difference. Velocity, 28-21. Twenty-eight sixty-eight. So I'm not sure if these variations of velocity are because it's trying to coat the barrel with the new powder. But again, we'll kind of factor that in into the data when we uh, calculate the standard deviations. I'm here in the back firing base because the main line obviously is really busy and so there's a lot of stuff going on, people talking, and it's hard to to talk to the camera and discuss a few details, you know, on the main firing line. So even though they're shooting in the adjacent base, this is a lot better than on the main firing line. That being said, I did those test rounds or I did those test groups to break in this rifle on the main firing line this morning. But I wanted to go ahead and talk about the rifle, which I did write about on my blog at OKFJ.net. So if you haven't read my articles, go ahead and check it out. It's got a lot more photos as far as the rebarreling process. But just a quick summary. So this project, the Savage 10 FP that I bought in 2003, I once I got the McMillan A5 stock inleted for the CDI Precision Gunworks DBM uh, bottom metal, and I tested it to make sure it works great, I said, let's go ahead and rebarrel the gun. So. I wanted to go with 6.5 Creedmoor. Well, well, actually, it was kind of up in the air, but I said, let's just go ahead and do 6.5 Creedmoor since I want to try out 6.5 Creedmoor. I've shot 2.60 before, so let's try 6.5.
So I called up Northland Shooter Supply, who sells pre-threaded, pre-chambered barrels for savages in by Schillen and Criterion. So I called him up, say, hey, what's going on? Uh, I spoke with James Kessler on October 18th, last month, and I uh, told him I wanted to get a 6.5 Creedmoor barrel, and he said he was out of them. So he was back ordering all those 6.5 Creedmoor barrels. Uh, so from what I understand, he's not actually cutting the chambers himself. He just gets them done from by Schillen and Criterion straight up, and he just stocks them. So I said, that's fine, you know what, um, I still want to place the order. And he said, he, but he was telling me that Criterion barrels were actually going to come in sooner, perhaps, because he was still unknown as far as shil his Schillen order. And while I've shot Criterion in my M1 Garand, because I have my M1 Garand uh, redone with a Criterion barrel, I said, you know what, I want to try Schillen because I've been looking at Schillen for a long time when I was pondering rebarreling my Savage. So I said, let's just get to Schillen. So I told him, let's go with a Schillen Select Match, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. 24 inches in length with a one and eight twist, standard shank savage with a recessed crown. And he said, okay, uh, we took the order. I also ordered the, the Northland Shooter Supply barrel nut and the recoil lug from him to replace the factory lug and nut. And I also got his action wrench. And so after that order was put in place, I said, you know what, I, I expected it to be deep in December, maybe even January 2017 when I'll get the, get the barrel. Surprisingly enough, I got an email from him in the first week of November, three weeks later, and he said, give him a call. So I called him up and asked him, you know, what was going on. He said, well, he actually got my barrel in. So I was like, great, um, got the barrel in. But he said there was one problem. Schillen messed up and they put a 11 degree target crown instead of the recessed crown. And he asked me, did I want that fixed or do I just want the barrel? And I said, you know what, just give me the barrel. Because if you already got it ready to go, a recessed crown and a target crown is not really a big deal to me. I have 11 degree target crowns on my service rifles, my competition service rifles, and I've smacked the muzzles of those against concrete before without any damage. It'll hit, it'll damage the outer part of the, the muzzle, but the crown itself is protected due to the fact that 11 degrees, it's concaved in, so the, the, the actual crown itself where the rifling meets the muzzle, that is protected. So I said, go ahead and just ship the barrel. And so he shipped the barrel, got on the truck, and I got it a week. It was scheduled for a week later, Monday. So Tuesday to Monday. And so I got it on Monday that following week. Following week. But during that time, uh, I said, okay, so the barrel's coming in. I'm going to have to take the action out of the stock. So I said, why don't I just repaint the stock? Because if you recall from the previous vlogs and my blog articles covering the Savage 10 that I have, I actually re had the my own DIY paint job, uh, a digital camo that I came up with using alumahide. So I sh it was uh, OD green with desert tan. And when I originally painted it, I didn't realize how light in color the desert tan is. And so I wasn't really too happy with the camo paint job. It was done well, but I just didn't like the, the color scheme. But I shot that for a while. I kept it like that as is for a long time because, you know, I didn't really care to repaint it. It wasn't really a necessity. But the alumahide um, is very durable, so it lasted a long time, and I spilled solvents on it without any issue. So when it came time to deciding if I want to really coat this gun or just go a cheaper route, I just said, you know, let's just go with a cheaper route. Alumahide is 10 bucks a can. So I said, I can do this, re repaint the stock, and repaint or and paint the stainless steel parts of this myself for 10 bucks. And I'll have to tear everything down for the Cerakoting company locally and I'll wait like a week or two weeks for um to, to have it done so so i when i was deciding on the actual paint though i uh i was looking online at brownell's website and i was either picking coyote or magpul fde I, I didn't know what the coyote looked like so i saw that they had magpul fde but there was a huge difference on their website as far as the the swatches that they use like the little color pictures that they use and so I went online on Google and I looked around and, and people had Magpul FDE and then they said the Coyote and the actual Magpul FDE products are the, almost the same. So I'm guessing Brownell's Magpul FDE should be exactly like Magpul FDE products. So unsure of the, 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 the shades, I ordered a can of each. It's only 10 bucks a can. So I ordered one Coyote, one Magpul FDE. When I got it in, I did a spray paint test on some cardboard. And they looked almost identical. So I said, let me just roll with the Magpul FDE. I didn't have any goal in mind as trying to match Magpul products because there's, some, there's no FDE products to, to put on this uh, for Magpul. So I, I just picked it arbitrarily. Anyway, so I cleaned out the stock. I just used acetone. I didn't sand it down or try to strip the previous paint job. 
I just wanted to paint over it because I was actually kind of afraid that if I use paint stripper, I could damage the, the McMillan A5 fiberglass. But I said, um, you know, it's not a big deal to paint over it. I'm just going to clean off, clean off the, uh, the overcoat with acetone and repaint it. And that's what I did. So I let this cure for about four days, five days before I put the action in. But that's what this is. This is a Magpul FDE Aluma High 2. And I also painted the bolt handle because it was... It's in the white when I bought this bolt handle from Sharpshooter Supply. So I painted it originally with black Krylon, just a quick black paint job. And that was starting to wear out on the knurled parts. So I said, I stripped that off and I painted the bolt handle. But this is the rifle as is. Um, so I shot it earlier on the main range. And I shot with the actually the Hornady ELD match 140 grain ammo. And then this prime ammo 130 grain from a place called Prime Ammo in Nevada or Las Vegas. And so my first, once I got it zeroed in, I, I bore sighted it quickly on the 50 with just, you know, taking the bolt out and looking through the bore, um, which I have an article on if you haven't, if you don't know how to bore sight without a laser, which you don't need a laser. But this is the, after I got zeroed in or fairly close, like I shot this at 100, then this at 100, and then I said, I want to try a group. So this, this is the first, uh, seven this is like the seventh through 12th rounds this is a five round group here and this is an excellent group it's about a quarter minute with the hornady eld 140 grain and so i shot another group after a, after a quick line break and it opened up and i kept shooting these fairly wide groups um but i equate this windage dispersion to just me because I, I i i think i'm torquing the bipod and there's a lot of bounce on the benches so I equate that to being me. And then the vertical dispersion is not too bad, so we'll work with that. But I, I tried the prime ammo and I was not impressed. This is kind of off, but I'll discount this to the fact that I didn't clean between this group and this group. And so I have the Hornady residue and then this new powder and new bullet going through the bore. But this is a second, a second group. This is six rounds here. And as you can see, there's a huge windage dispersion. And so I, I, there was another line break. I cleaned the gun and I shot one more group. This is a 10 round group with the Hornady ELD 140 grain. And again, the windage dispersion is terrible, which is probably me. The vertical dispersion is not too bad. I would equate that to about a half minute, quarter to half minute, probably half minute. If you do edge to edge minus the diameter of the bullet. I'll work with this if that's me. And I shot another group with the Hornady after a little adjustment. And this is back to the prime. Ammo. I cleaned between here and I shot these two five round groups of the prime ammo and they're still kind of open like pretty 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 wide, so I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work with this see what we can do with the prime ammo I'm gonna try to work with the prime ammo and see what I can do But the Hornady is looking more, looking more promising Especially when you look at the first group that I shot in the morning and then the rest of it just could have been me so a quick summary of this rifle specs as it is today. It's the Savage 10 FP action from 2003 with the 4.275 inch action screw spacing. I've got a Schillen Select Match barrel chambered in two, uh, 65 Creedmoor, 24 inches in length with a 1 and 8 twist, 11 degree target crown. I've got the Northland Shooter Supply recoil lug and the Northland Shooter Supply barrel nut. I've got a McMillan A5 stock with the CDI Precision Gunworks DBM bottom metal. Ken Farrell, zero MOA base, one inch TPS rings with low height, and then a Bushnell <clears throat> 3200 Elite 10X by 40 mil dot scope with the MOA turrets. And the bolt handle is a Sharp Shooter Supply bolt handle from about 2004. And then I've got the Harris bipod. But that's pretty much for the specs as it is today. Future specs is just the optic system. I will change out the optic system soon enough. I'm looking at probably the Vortex AMGs my, right now at the, the front runner. I might get a, another HD Gen 2, but those are heavier than, than most scopes. And considering this rifle is fairly light, I kind of want to keep it on that side. So the AMG seems like the best option. It's just they're hard to come by. But when I get the AMG, I'm going to have to get a different base. I'm going to go with the 20-minute base and then a new ring. Either I'll do sh uh, sequence rings or I might even go with a spur mount. We'll see. That being said, I have um, dyes already. I have powder. I have, I'm going to have brass. I'm going to use this stuff for the once fired. I just need to order bullets. So I'm looking at Burger 130 grain AR tactical. That's kind of like a boat tail hollow point that they make, which is going to be jump tolerant. 
I'm going to try their 140 grain hybrid target, which is also supposed to be jump tolerant, but it's more of a blend between VLD and a standard BTHP, Botel Hollow Point. So it's kind of a combination of o the secant and tangent ogives to get you a higher uh, BC bullet with the jump tolerance of the, the traditional Botel Hollow Points. So that's where it stands. I'm going to start working on some loads. Um, today was fairly uneventful. Uh, I kind of came into the range today out of the blue because I was actually supposed to go to Camp Pendleton for a match, a 3 by 600 match today, but I had some other obligations today in the afternoon, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to stay close to home and then shoot this because I wanted to get this stuff broken in. So I, I came to the range this morning, uh, West End Gun Club this morning to, to shoot this Savage rifle instead of going to the match in Pendleton and shooting my 700P. Granted, I could have shot this at the match instead, but I didn't have any zero. I just threw the scope back on and a new barrel, and obviously I have nothing to go off of, so it would have been impossible or almost impossible for me to try to, to zero in this rifle quickly during a match on a 3x600. So that being said, that's it for today's range vlog. 11-19, um, November 19th. It's 9.30 right now. Again, it was very uneventful. Not much to say. It's just me breaking in this rifle. I'm going to hopefully get some of this stuff ironed out as far as my ability to shoot off this bipod, this Savage with this bipod off a bench, but I'm guessing most of it's me, and um, I'll try to develop a load that can probably match this ELD, because I think the ELD match is, is going to be good based on this group here, but we'll see. I mean, this is a whole new a whole new gun now that you got a new barrel on it, it's, it's, so it's going to be a new new thing to work with. So I think that's it for today's vlog. I'm not sure we're gonna hit the range again. Hopefully soon. I probably won't come back out to the range until I get some bullets to to make some hand loads with, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyways, uh, until then, see you at the next vlog.